Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Toombs. Many of you know me. On behalf of the California Faculty Association, and in particular, the San Diego State University chapter, of which I am president, I welcome you all here. And as vice president of CFA for the state of California, I'll be your MC today. I wish to acknowledge this land on which San Diego State University operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional homeland and unceded territory of the Kumeyaay. Today, this meeting place is still home to the Kumeyaay, the Lusanyo, and many other indigenous people from across Turtle Land, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work and live on this land. Okay. I'd also like to thank President Dr. Adela De La Torre for all of the work that she and her team did to help us in bringing this event to you today. This is an important gathering for CFA, for San Diego State, and for the state of California. And it's important for the hopes and dreams of the nearly half million students at our 23 CSU campuses. As a professor who has taught at this campus for many years, it makes me proud that the next governor of the state of California has decided to come to SDSU. It says, yes, yes, absolutely. It says a lot about Gavin Newsom that he has chosen to be here with us on a CSU campus in the final days of this crucial election. All the people joining us today at this podium are concerned about students' access to college, about the affordability of higher education, and we all care about making teaching a strong and meaningful profession. Because as we like to say in CFA land, faculty working conditions are students' learning conditions, and CFA has always striven to support elected leaders who will put students and faculty first. We need people who understand the value of making sure that everyone who is eligible for a seat at the university actually does get a seat in the CSU. We in CFA believe in anti-racism and social justice, and we understand that education is a right and a necessity, and that it is not exclusively for the rich and the white. And we are SDSU. That's our new branding. I just wanted to get it out there. <laughs> now, it is my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, a friend of CFA who is our endorsed candidate for state treasurer in the election on Tuesday, Fiona Ma. Uh -huh. I'm not through yet. Fiona Ma served in the California State Assembly from 2006 until 2012. She was the first Asian American woman to become the Assembly Speaker Pro Tem. Assembly Member Ma grew up around academics. Her father was an adjunct professor at New York University. Shout out to all the lecturer professors that we have here. <laughs> and her mother was a teacher for more than 20 years. Assembly member Ma got her start in politics on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, and in that role, she successfully worked to shut down massage parlors that engaged in human trafficking and illegal prostitution. Later in the state assembly, she advocated for public education, expanded access to health care, and supported greater protections for workers. Let's greet with great applause our friend and next state treasurer, Fiona Ma. All right, thank you all for coming out. It's great to see all the red and white pom poms. How many of you are enjoying the weather today? How many of you are excited to be here? How many of you have voted already? 
Okay. And how many of you feel lucky to live in California, as Charles said? Well, I feel honored and lucky to live here in California, to be here with my CFA friends, Charles, thank you, and my good friends, Senate President Pro Tem Tony Atkins and also uh, Assembly Speaker, the first woman to hold both posts, I think the only legislator to hold both posts, right here from San Diego. Former Aztec alum, Senator Ricardo Lara is coming out in a little bit. And of course, the main attraction, our next governor, Gavin Newsom. So I never thought I'd be standing here today, running to be your 34th state treasurer. But here I am, four days to go, and hoping to make my parents proud. My parents came to this country uh, as immigrants to live the American dream. When they got married, they had $3,000 uh, to their name. For the first four years, I lived with my grandparents in New York's Chinatown while my parents worked in Yonkers to save money. And with a small loan and their savings, we bought our first house in Great Neck, Long Island because of the excellent public school system. My father always said, education is the great equalizer in society, so they pushed us to get straight A's. He also wanted us to be one of the lead professions, a lawyer, engineer, accountant, or a doctor. So I got my degree in accounting, my brother went to Cal Poly and got his degree in engineering, and my sister graduated from San Francisco State University and is a chiropractor today. So I am standing here as a proud product of public schools and hardworking parents. I'm proud to have a 100% record of supporting education funding increases throughout my public service career and to have opposed efforts to raise tuition on students or cut compensation for our frontline education workers. Last year, I'm happy that Governor Brown signed a landmark bill that makes community college free for full-time students for their first year. But we need to do more and make public education more accessible for all students, ensure everyone has a chance to get a good paying job and not be saddled with high student loan debt. A quality education isn't a handout, rather it is an investment in our future and critical to our state and nation's continued success in this global economy. There is a clear nexus between a world-class, affordable higher education system and the ability to attract good paying quality jobs. However, over the last 30 years, our state rapidly disinvested in public higher education as our student body became more diverse. As state treasurer, I will continue to use my role to advocate for more predictable, sustainable, and transparent funding for education at all levels. This is absolutely critical in ensuring education costs are kept affordable. We also need to stand with our faculty, counselors, librarians, and coaches in ensuring their rights are protected and that they can continue to do the important work they do in setting our students up for success. So your voice, your vote is your voice. So help elect candidates from school board all the way to the governor. In the next four days, there is more work to be done. We need you to knock on doors, get on the phones, and help turn out the vote this weekend. We need you and your friends to show up at the polls on Tuesday and show the nation that California leads because of our diversity, our innovation, and because we believe California is moving in the right direction. We are the Golden State. We are the fifth largest economy. Let's show the nation that San Diego is the city of motion and that the blue tsunami is real and moving east. Thank you all for coming out. All right, hi everybody. I <laughs> I'm Professor Doreen Mattingly. I am the Vice President of the San Diego State Chapter of the California Faculty Association. And they brought in a professor to get you excited. <laughs> 
So on election day two years ago, I lost my mind. And in the political nightmare since then, I have been counting down to Tuesday, November 6th, the first time we have a real opportunity to fight back. Go! Woo! It's our first chance to really make a stand for justice, to make a stand for equality, and to come together to make a stand for education. Because without education, there is no way to fight against ignorance and no way to fight against fear. Now, I know all of you are going to vote, so that's not an issue. But this year, we all need to do more than just vote. For the next four days, all of us in the room we need to walk the talk. We have to. We need to get outside of our comfort zone. We need to set aside despair and irony. And we need to get out the vote. Now, do you want to make a difference on Tuesday? Here's what you need to do. Go to GavinNewsom.com. That's easy. GavinNewsom.com. Right at the top of the page, if you click on Get Involved, it will tell you a number of things that you can do in the next four days to make a difference and to take our country back. So do you want to make a difference? Shake the pom-poms for crying out loud. <laughs> Woo! All right, that's GavinNewsom.com. Dot com and you can get involved that way. You can text for the Gavin Newsom campaign in the privacy of your own home. You can find phone banks to help Gavin and to help other candidates that Gavin is supporting and who are supporting Gavin. So you need to get involved. We all need to do our part to make California a progressive beacon. And we all need to do our part to make sure this election, we send a message about our values and what we want for California. All right, let's get out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doreen, uh, my fearless co-leader of the chapter. We have... Uh, an elected official with us today who we, who we would like to recognize, and that is Congresswoman Susan Davis. Right here, please stand. Congresswoman Susan Davis represents this area, California's 53rd Congressional Dif District. I live in your area. <laughs> uh, in the U.S. House of Representatives, she is the ranking member of the Higher Education and Workforce Training Subcommittee in Congress, and I want to thank you for being here with us today. We appreciate it so much. It is now my pleasure to welcome on stage our distinguished guests and speakers, State Senator Ricardo Lara, returning home, <laughs> and Kayla Cooper, who is president of the San Diego State College Democrats. Please make some noise for them. Hello, everyone. My name is Kayla Cooper, and I am proud to serve as president of the SDSU College Democrats. Where y'all at? All right. I am extremely happy to see students and faculty coming together today to advocate for people we believe will create policies that are based on facts and empathy. I come from a family of extremely opinionated non-voters, but when I look further back into the history of my family, I would find people who died for my right to place my ballot in a box. Think about that. The right that each and every one of us is endowed with, someone else had to die for, and there are people right now trying to ensure that certain people are restricted from that right. But why? If your vote does not matter, then why are people willing to ignore the Constitution to ensure you never reach that ballot box? I have no doubt 
that my generation has the ability and determination to correct the course of this country. We simply cannot let things get so bad that when our kids read 1984, they think it's nonfiction. We must engage. We must be the solution. We must take the reins from the out-of-touch people in Washington right now. There are a lot of ways that we can make a difference, and it starts with voting. We should not just accept what those in places of power tell us. We need to be proactive in educating ourselves and those around us on who and what to vote for. We have the responsibility to search out the truth. It's time we run for office. I'm talking to people my age, hi. Um, and we can campaign for other people who share our values, which is exactly what we are doing here today. To be a Democrat means to uplift as many people as possible, not just a select few. I live by the motto, service above self. Choose a social issue you care about and dedicate just a few moments of your life to alleviating that issue. And in the process, never miss a chance to vote. Now, I'd like to tell you about Senator Ricardo Lara. Shout out. He's a graduate of our campus, and he works hard for the CSU to help students like me and all the students who've come here after him. Like so many CSU students, Senator Lara was first in his family to attend a university. He grew up in East Los Angeles, raised by his factory worker father and his mother, who was a seamstress. He knows firsthand the challenges that face immigrant and working class communities. While a student here at SDSU, Senator Lara was executive vice president of Associated Students. He worked on the landmark AB 540 law that opened doors for undocumented students to seek a college degree. He's dedicated to making sure California students He's dedicated to making sure California students have access to public colleges and universities, and he's strong in his commitment to serve the most vulnerable people. He's also made history by becoming the first openly gay person of color elected to the California State Senate. It is my absolute honor to introduce State Senator Ricardo Lara. Aztecs, where are you at? God, it's so good to be home. It's so good to be back on campus. You know, this is uh, not only where I came out of the closet, but I came out ready to fight. I came out ready to fight to make sure that every single one of us has an opportunity for the American dream. You know, thank you, Kayla. It's so amazing to see our uh, SDSU students continue to thrive. Uh, you know, it's, it's such an important opportunity for us now more than ever to unite as a collective group of individuals who want to continue to fight for that American dream for absolutely everyone. I am proud to serve in the California State Senate where we continue to prove that if you work on the most far-reaching environmental policies in the world, that you incorporate our immigrant communities into our economy, that you pay a livable wage, that you pay women equal pay for equal work, that we actually continue to thrive economically, that the sky does not fall, and that California continues to be the fifth largest economy in the world. We continue to prove what Democrats can get done when we are in power, because we include absolutely everyone, people just like my parents. You know, my parents came to the United States without documents, but they came here with a dream. They came to make sure that they provided an opportunity for their children, and they absolutely did that. Serving as the first person, openly gay person of color in the California State Senate, you can tell that I'm pretty much Donald Trump's worst nightmare. And that is why I am now running to be your next California Insurance Commissioner. To make sure not only that we once and for all elect an LGBT person statewide for the first time in California, but that we continue to fight for those values that are critical to the success of every single working family here in California. You know, the Department of Insurance is the largest consumer protection agency in the state. We know what Donald Trump has done to the Federal Consumer Protection Bureau, completely dismantled it. So we are the last stand, and we have to make sure that we keep our insurance companies accountable to who? To us, 
not to their shareholders, that we keep them accountable to the victims of these horrible fires that we have suffered, that we keep them accountable to the hardworking men and women that confide in our insurance industry to be able to protect their most valuable asset, their home. And at a time where climate change is challenging all of us to act more responsibly, it is up to the insurance commissioner to make sure that the insurance companies are part of that dialogue. Who are using their expertise to be able to work with us to ensure that we protect our most vulnerable places here in California is critical. We know they are the experts at risk calculation. They should be at the table working with us to make sure that we protect our communities from this ongoing catastrophes that we keep seeing. This is the new reality for us, folks. So we want to make sure we keep somebody in this position that's going to not only keep the consumer in mind, but actually comes from a working class family just like every single one of us. And not a billionaire who's trying to buy his way into the governorship again, and he will fail and we will win November 6th. Because we know that these positions are earned and not bought. These positions are earned and not paid for by wealthy Republican donors. And we're going to demonstrate that in California, we're going to continue to elect people that are accountable to us, to working men and women of this beautiful state. Before I leave, I just want to give a shout out to our SDSU faculty that put this together, our CFA members. Anytime, anytime I meet a CSU faculty member, I thank them because they didn't give up on a first generation student. They didn't give up on a student who had no idea what was happening when I came onto this campus and didn't know how to navigate the system. It was our CSU professors that, again, demonstrate their passion and their care and love for our students. I would not be here before you as a California state senator if it wasn't for the CSU faculty, and particularly the San Diego State faculty that are here today. Let's give them a round of applause. And as we continue to hear other speakers, let's give them a, a, a warm Aztec applause and let's get ready for our next governor of California, Governor Gavin Newsom, when he shows up. Let's show him a little Aztec. <laughs> let's give him an Aztec welcome when he shows up. When he shows up. Pay attention, it's like a lecture. <laughs> But again, thank you so much. Muchas gracias a todos estados por estar aquí con nosotros. Vamos a ganar como demócratas. Vamos a luchar como siempre lo hemos hecho. Y otra vez, muchas gracias por su apoyo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Laura. And I do want to say this, though, that I ran into Senator Laura at the airport in Sacramento after a long day of meetings. And I said, hi, Assemblymember Laura. And he very politely and gently corrected me and said, Senator, <laughs> we're going to take a short break and then we will be right back with the official uh, program. I'm going to be introducing State Senator Tony Atkins, who represents the 39th Senatorial District here in San Diego, is a friend of CFA and a major friend of public higher education. Her full title, Madam President Pro Tem of the Senate, is very significant since she is the first woman and the first openly LGBTQ person to lead our state senate. Tony has been a champion for us on our campus. She fought against tuition increases and for reinvestment in the CSU. She fought for an increase in the number of full-time faculty and for more health counselors for our students. She stands up for us at the CSU Board of Trustees and campaigns with us for fair faculty working, working conditions. And she was there when it's time for laws to protect our immigrant students. Most importantly, Tony fought to increase the number of seats in the CSU so all eligible students have the chance to attend. So please join me in welcoming the President of the California State Senate, Tony Atkins. Thank you. 
Thank you, Charles. Good morning, San Diego State. Are you in the house? You are. You know, we had to let the room cool down after Ricardo Lara finished. That's the way it is in the Senate, too, I tell you. Uh, I am so honored to be here today. This is my Senate district, and I am thrilled to be here with some incredible people. I want to thank Charles. I want to thank Jennifer Egan, who's back there, Lillian Taez, who is here with the Faculty Association. Their presence is felt in Sacramento, just like all of yours, the students, the faculty. They do a great job for you every single day, representing the needs of higher education and CSU in particular at our state capitol. So I want to give it up to them. We need to thank them for the hard work that they do. I am so thrilled to be here today. Now, I'm not on the ballot, but don't worry, 2020, don't forget. So what I'm doing right now, I, I am here to support three people I have already voted for. You saw Congresswoman Susan Davis. She is my Congress member. She was here supporting the candidates and Gavin for governor. Uh, I want to thank my good friend Fiona Ma, who is back out on the trail. Fiona and I served together uh, in the assembly. She is a force of nature. And uh, I've already voted for her, of course. I hope you have too, or you will be. And of course, Ricardo Lara, Senator Lara. Uh, he is a dear friend and someone who you know well as an Aztec. He is always promoting SDSU. And I think he'd rather still be student body president, but if that's not available, he's going to go for insurance commissioner. I want to say uh, each of the people that have spoken to you today, and I'm going to include uh, Congresswoman Davis, a member of our Jewish community, uh, one of the first women elected, someone who's been a mentor to me for a long time. When you look and you hear the story of Fiona Ma and you listen to Ricardo Lara, you know, we are the face of California. I'm a first generation college student myself from Appalachia. My parents, a uh, blue collar, a coal miner, a seamstress. And what do we know that education makes a difference in our lives? And it makes a difference in the economy of our community and the state if we, the most important resource in this state, the people, are educated. And so I'm really thrilled to be here and be part of what's happening in California. We are looking forward. We are not looking back. And when we talk about looking forward, we have to talk about the next governor of California. And in my mind, that is Gavin Newsom. And he is here. He is in the house. I was honored to be a trustee when I was speaker and represent uh, on the board of trustees. I was honored to be a UC regent, and I sat right next to Gavin Newsom. He shows up, he gets it done, and he holds the line. He is creative, he is innovative, he is forward-looking, he is about the economy of California, he knows that early childhood education is critical, and he knows you got to carry it all the way through. All the way through. He is not afraid to rise to the challenge on issues like affordable housing and homelessness. And we know that students suffer from those issues as well. We need housing. We need to make sure that you're able to focus on your studies. And you can't do that if you don't have a decent roof over your head. He understands that food insecurity is a problem in this state. We have the greatest state in the greatest country in the world. And yet we've got to tackle issues like housing, food insecurity, the opportunities to get a good education. And yes, you've got to stand for equality. He was not afraid not afraid to step forward and say members of the LGBT community should have the right to marry. He took a stand and he didn't back off. And guess what? I got married. Thank you, Gavin. 
And until the courts resolved it, I was a member of a protected class of 18,000 couples who was able to get married because Gavin took a stand. So it is important who you vote for. It is important that you know that someone is going to stand up for you, someone is going to rise to the challenge, someone is going to take the risk if he has evaluated that it is worth the risk and that we're going to make everything better. I am the President of the Senate and I look forward, look forward to working with our next governor on all of these issues critically important to us. And I know and you know that the next governor of the great state of California will be Gavin Newsom. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Senator Tony Atkins. Now I have the opportunity to introduce someone who I think of as my sister in this struggle. She's a fighter who works hard for all of us. When it became clear that enrollment in the CSU was lagging and more students needed access, she took on the fight to open the university's doors. When our faculty were being shortchanged in salaries, we needed the support we, to support our families and teach our students, she led that fight. When others didn't believe CFA could stand up for faculty, she led the one-day strike on her campus. And a few years later, she led CFA to the brink of a system-wide strike when that was what it took to assert faculty power. Now, it didn't happen because we had power. <laughs> <laughs> Under her leadership, CFA has begun an anti-racism and social justice transformation to make sure our union works every day to reflect these values in our work. I think you all know who I'm talking about, so let me just say I'm proud to introduce my union sister, CFA president extraordinaire, Professor Jennifer Egan. Hello, SDSU. Good afternoon. I'm really pleased to be with you here today and to welcome our next governor of California right here at San Diego State. Woo. Um, I want to thank Charles Toombs, our fearless CFA chapter leader here in San Diego, and his whole chapter, Doreen, everyone, uh, they just do an amazing job here supporting the faculty and students. Um, you know, in addition to everything else Charles does, which is a lot, uh, he is the faculty chair of Africana Studies. <laughs> Woo, Africana Studies, yes. Okay. So, you know, this day and this election has been a long time coming. As Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom has been on the CSU Board of Trustees for eight years. Wow, that's a long time. And over that time, we've got to know him really well. So he was there with CSU faculty when we were in a really tough fight for a fair contract, and he stood with us. And he was there for CSU students when some people on the board uh, thought that raising tuition on students yet again was a good idea. It was not. <laughs> Gavin knew that. Uh, Gavin has said many times that it's important for every single Californian who is eligible to have a seat in the CSU. And we stand ready to truly make this a reality going forward. Gavin is no stranger to big, bold dreams. That's why we like him. Uh, as mayor, he brought the nation's first genuinely universal health care plan to San Francisco's uninsured residents, well ahead of his time. That's right. That's before anyone else was talking about it. And we're confident that he's going to provide that same kind of vision to public higher education. Gavin has persistently defended our California values. And we know what that means. That means fighting for immigrant rights. 
That's right. That means fighting for workers' rights. And that means fighting for LGBTQ rights as well. Uh, this is why uh, we're so looking forward to our, who will be our new governor-elect come Tuesday. Uh, he has acted to mitigate climate change in our state. He's worked for, yes, for, he's worked for sensible gun laws. He's worked for sensible marijuana laws. And he knows he has worked, he has worked so tirelessly in the fight against income inequality. And he understands so well, as we do in the CSU, that public higher education plays such a crucial role in social mobility. That solution to income inequality begins with education, and that is what we're all here fighting for today. So when asked why uh, state funding for the CSU has dropped as the student body changed, uh, it now consists of mainly students of color. Gavin knew what we were talking about. He wasted no time in coming in and addressing this inequity. We believe California must make this fundamental promise. Each and every student, regardless of home zip code or any other piece of their identity, is capable and everyone deserves access to public higher education. So I, I know everyone feels it, you know, I feel anxiety and excitement for Tuesday on all hosts of levels. We're at one of those critical junctures where we can make a real turning point. We're going to make decisions that are going to impact the future um, and we're going to do it together with our fellow voters who will hopefully all vote the right way. But, <laughs> but we know Gavin stands with us to help create that future. So let's give it up for the next governor of the great state of California, Gavin Newsom. Thank you all, how you doing? Thanks for coming out. Four more days, four more days. It is good to be here, fancy. I'm here at San Diego State. All these fancy folks out here on campus. I'm grateful to each and every one of you for taking the time to be out here. And, and I'm grateful that all of you are going to be coming out and turning out in record numbers on November 6th and voting. This blue wave is real. I want to just thank Jen and the CFA faculty, Charles, everybody uh, that organized this event. My good friend, Ricardo Lara, to the extraordinary Tony Atkins, I can't believe how lucky you are, San Diego. You got her in the position she belongs as head of the Senate. Uh, and to our Congresswoman, uh, one of the great leaders in Washington, D.C., to each and every one of you, thank you for your leadership. Everybody in this room has one thing in common. You are folks that don't just dream about the way the world should be. You're doers. You step up. You step in. You wouldn't be here today unless you were committed to not only the life of San Diego, this county, this region, this state, but also our nation and the world we're trying to build. Because you recognize this is not a moment to be a bystander. This is a moment where we have the capacity to shape our future. We have agency. We have the ability to manifest our ideals. It's not just something to experience the future. You've got to make it so. Future's not just in front of you, it's inside of you. It's decisions. It is your choice to move this country back in a rational direction. It's your choice to keep the momentum in the state of California. I was thinking about California the other day in the context of sort of exploring its proud past, but also some of the struggles we had in this state. And I was trying to contextualize this moment from a national prism. Stay with me a moment because this is very personal to many of you. It was a former mayor 
in San Diego that you may recall by the name of Pete Wilson. And, and <laughs> I'm just making sure you're all just paying attention. <laughs> but I was thinking, you know, I was looking back, thinking about 2018 in the United States of America, watching the President of the United States yesterday, you know. <laughs> you're all still awake. <laughs> it's good. Watching his speech in the White House, talking about that caravan, talking about putting you know, tens of thousands of troops, 15,000 troops right on your border, right here, a stone's throw away, emphasis, stone's throw. All that racial priming, not even coded language anymore. All the xenophobia, that nativism, that fear of other. And I was thinking about California, because it wasn't that long ago that those words were very familiar to all of us. In so many ways, 2018 in America is a lot like the 1980s and 90s in California. I mean, just exactly right. Well, Prop 187. You know what? Prop 187 would make Donald Trump blush. That came from our state. That was a current governor that was promoting that to promote his reelection. Three strikes and you're out. The most aggressive mandatory minimum sentences that had ever been placed on a ballot in American history. You know what the big debate was at the CSU Board of Trustees in the UC regions? Was getting rid of affirmative action in 1994. In fact, it was 1995 the UC regions officially eliminated affirmative action in their system. 1996, Prop 209. 1998, the end of bilingual education in California. 1990s, Republican Party in their ascendancy. Fast forward today. You're about to vote in four days. Republican Party is third party status in the state of California. <laughs> Prop 187 was thrown out as unconstitutional in the courts. You righted the wrong on three strikes by supporting Prop 36. And finally, we're having a debate again about addressing the issues of affirmative action. That's resiliency. That's California. That was our comeback story. So when you're sitting there, self-medicating, watching Rachel Maddow every night, <laughs> I know, I'm there too. <laughs> Just remember that. Just remember that. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. I'm serious. I really mean that. Adaptability, flexibility, the ability to start focusing on the things that unite us, not what divides us. Look, I'm so proud of this damn state. This is a state where 27% of us are foreign born. No other state can lay claim to that. This is a state, this is a state, President Donald Trump, that's brought in 112,000 refugees over the last 15 years. 1,454 Syrian refugees in 2016. No state does what California does. Living together, advancing together, across every conceivable difference. What makes this state great is that at our best, we don't tolerate our diversity. At our best, we celebrate our diversity. That's a value worth protecting. It's California. Man, I wouldn't want to be any place else. Here with you today in this extraordinary place we call home. You know what's interesting about this place we call home? There are only two dreams. Just an interesting fact. There's the American dream. And then there's the California dream. I'm not aware of the Kansas dream, the Kentucky dream, the Alabama dream. I don't mean to disparage, but I'm just saying. There's only one other dream, the California dream. That's a pretty special thing. Why is that the case? I remember listening, Horace Greeley, forgive the gender vernacular, but Horace Greeley said in the 1850s, go west, young man, go west. 
that pioneering spirit that defined the best of California, that coast of dreams. A state not just of dreamers, as I said, but of doers, of entrepreneurs, of innovators, a state that prides itself on being on the leading and cutting edge of new ideas. We are America's coming attraction, California. We are. The future happens here first. The sun doesn't just set out here on the West Coast. It rises out here on the coast of San Diego. Man, I love my state. I love our state. So don't lose that state of mind. Don't lose your sense of optimism, that pride, that spirit that should define this moment where folks are stepping up, where folks are stepping in, where folks are beginning to look at new about their own capacity to change the course of events. I remember Oliver Wendell Holmes once said something, old Supreme Court justice, not in the image of Kavanaugh, <laughs> who said his life is action and passion. It's required of all of us to share the action and passion of our time at peril of being judged not to have lived. What he was saying is each of us will be judged, but more importantly, ultimately judge ourselves to the extent we contribute to the life of our city, our state, and our nation. That's the moment we're in. This is our time. This is California's time to step up, not just to resist Trump and Trumpism, and we will. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President, this is America's most un-Trump state. <laughs> but to also paint in bold colors to be a positive alternative, to enliven people's senses. I, I believe in the power of emulation. I believe success leaves clues. 101 consecutive months of net job growth, California. 3.7%, I'm losing you on this, 3.7% GDP growth. Eat your heart out, Donald Trump. That's over a four year period, not one quarter. Three million jobs have been created in this state in the last seven years. We're not debating deficits anymore. We inherited $27 billion from a Republican administration. We now are debating the sizes of surpluses. And we did all that. Democrats, we did all that, not despite our progressive values, but because of our progressive values. California. Man. Our moment. This is our moment, but I'm not naive about this moment as well. And I want to just close with this. <laughs> I believe in growth, but I also believe in inclusion. Yes, yes. I think Aristotle was right. You cannot live a good life in an unjust society. Talk about vox veritas, vita. And every student here at San Diego State should know those words, because that's your logo, right? <laughs> Uh-huh, you're looking that up right now. I'm... Man, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but Aristotle was right. There's 134,000 human beings out on the streets and sidewalks on any given night in America, or rather in California. America's homeless challenge is disproportionately represented in our state. 24% of the homeless in America are in our state. Seven and a half million people in California still living below the poverty line. 19% of Californians live below the poverty line when you consider the only thing you have to consider, which is cost of living. We must do more. We must do better. It's not just about growth, it's about inclusion. And so in that spirit, the spirit of optimism, you know, to paraphrase that old they refer to him as the old dog, Bill Clinton. But, they, but they, you remember the explainer in chief as Obama explained. It. But he said, there's nothing wrong. I'll paraphrase him. There's nothing wrong with California that can't be fixed by what's right with California. 
We'll, we'll, we'll address those issues. We're going to get serious about housing. We're going to get serious about homelessness. We're going to get serious about mental health. We're going to get serious about the affordability challenges in this state. We are committed to addressing those issues. But we're going to do it in a way that focuses on the Commonwealth. Because one thing I've learned, there's no leak on your side of our boat. We are all better off when we are all better off. We need to talk in those terms. The Commonwealth. Communitarianism. So I'm here a hard-headed pragmatist, but also an idealist. My why is standing up for ideals, striking out against injustice. I'm inspired by you. I'm inspired by this state. I have been all over this state over the course of the last three years, and one thing I know for certain there is not a problem in this state that hasn't been solved by somebody somewhere. That is a fact. You go to parts of this state, I will give you foster care programs that will have your jaw drop because they're so extraordinary. Child care programs that are the envy of the nation. Folks that are focused on brain health and substance abuse issues, turning lives around. You think homelessness can't be solved? I'll show you dozens of programs where are turning people's lives around and proving that homelessness can be solved, not just in this state, in this nation. Incredible things are happening. Here's the antidote. If you don't like the way the world looks when you're standing up, stand on your head and go local. Remarkable things are happening at the local level. And one of those remarkable things is reflected in the extraordinary union that represents San Diego State University faculty and counselors and librarians. And I wanna just give a special shout out to the CFA because unions brought us the middle class. They got, brought us the weekend. They got you workers comp. They are the ones responsible for your overtime. And you know what? The best is yet to come, not only for unions, not only for San Diego, not only for San Diego State, but if you turn out and vote in record numbers, if you make sure Ricardo Lara gets in as your insurance commissioner, you make sure that our congressional representatives get what they deserve, which is your support, we're going to turn things around in the next four days. And I promise you this, the best is yet to come. Thank you all very much.